The Raycast Vehicle Class. Let's get motoring. The Canon JS Library has a great class called Raycast Vehicle. It takes quite a bit of code to get one working, so rather than have you typing it all in, for this video I'm just going to explain how it works using a working example. Once you've got the idea of it, you can replace the simplified models with your own models and you have a driving car game. Here's one I created using the Raycast Vehicle class. Shoot along to this address for the starting template for this video. You can move the car using the on-screen joystick control. This is handled using my Toon 3D library. Just a little library that you might find useful for demos. To create a joystick, simply call New Joystick, pass in an options object that contains an on-move handler. You also need to set the game property to the location where the on-move handler is found. This allows you to wrap it inside a class. Here we're just passing the root object, this. The on move event receives a forward and turn value. These will be in the range minus one to one. But before we look in detail at the on move method, we need to understand the object called vehicle. Look at the init physics function. We create a cannon world and a helper, setting the broad face handler and gravity. Then we set up ground and wheel materials. We also create a contact material and add this to our world. Here we say that if the wheel is touching the ground then the friction should be set to 0.3. A raycast vehicle takes a chassis and then we add wheels using the add wheel method. When creating a wheel it requires a complex options object. You're defining the radius of the wheel and the direction it's going to apply forces to the chassis to keep the chassis floating above the ground. For each wheel that you add it will have a different chassis connection point local. This is where the centre of the wheel will be located in the local coordinate space of the chassis. See how we first attach a wheel at 1, 0, minus 1. This will be the front right wheel. Then the front left wheel followed by the right rear wheel and finally the left rear wheel. Once we have the wheels defined we can use the vehicle array wheel infos to create some rigid bodies and 3GS meshes to visualize the wheels. But if you comment out from wheel bodies to let matrix you'll see that the chassis still behaves perfectly. The wheels are just visual eye candy. The forces being applied to the chassis is what makes it all work. The code at the end of the init physics function creates a height field, a special grid of triangles where each vertex can have a unique y value, but the x and z values are in a grid where the gap between each vertex in the x and z directions is defined by element size. The y value is provided by an array of values. Here these are calculated using trig functions. The Canon helper is able to turn a Canon height field into a 3GS mesh. I promise we would review the on move callback that's called as the joystick thumb moves around. In this function we use the values of forward and turn to generate force and steer values. If forward is not zero then we set the brake value for each wheel zero to three to zero. Therefore each wheel has no brake applied. Then for the rear wheels we apply the force we calculated using the method apply engine force. If the forward value is zero, then we apply the brake force to each wheel. Finally, we use the set steering value method to rotate the wheels with index zero and one. The Canon.Raycast vehicle class is a great starting point for a racing game. When using the Canon library, it's important that you know that not all collisions are supported. Here's a table that shows which collisions are supported. For example, if your chassis is a box and your terrain is a tri-mesh, a surface you've modelled using a 3D application like Blender, then your game will not work because only sphere to tri-mesh collisions are supported, not box to tri-mesh. You can usually get around this problem by either creating a proxy version of your terrain using spheres, planes, boxes, cylinders, or a better solution is to create a height field that is the overall size of your terrain and then use a raycaster to set each vertex on the height field to match the terrain by casting directly down in the y-axis. 
But it's worth pointing out this issue in case you hit a problem and can't fathom why it isn't working. That completes the introduction to using the Canon Physics Library with 3GS. This video comes from my PAC course. Find the course on Udemy by following the links in the description.